Yes, welcome, welcome. Let me see. If you are on, just let me know how you're doing today. We're not having service uh, in person, and so we're having it online. So I like everyone. Good morning, Dexy. Yes, please come on, join in, join in, join in, join in. And I would like to get your comments. I'd like to get your comments. Yes, yes, yes. The Lord is good and his mercies endure us forever. Oh, yes. Okay, I'm going to have to send something else. I just wanted to make sure people are doing well. Meanwhile, if you have your kids, I'd like you to watch this. Let's begin with this. Little Dixie. Hi, my name is Zeb. And my name is Zach. And, and it's, it's the Zeb, Zeb and Zach, Zach Show. Show. Well, here's a story about Zeb and Zach. You can learn from God and keep them on track. Or sit right now and listen up, y'all. Oh, this story's got a little song. What about me? Well, you knew, Clyde. Today we are standing out here in this field to tell you how much God loves you. Hey, Zach. Um, how is us freezing out here going to tell people about God's love? No, we're not going to tell the story. The snow will tell the story. Well, now that won't work. Snow doesn't talk. What? Hello, snow. Hello. My name is Deb. What's your name? How are you today? See, nothing. They just sits there. No, what I want the boys and girls to know is that God made us just like this. He made us pure as the white driven snow, but then sin entered the world and separated us from God. Hey, Zach. Yeah. What is sin? Well, uh, sin would be kind of like the bad stuff that you do. Oh, like picking my nose? What? You know. No, no, not in front of a friend's No. Sorry. Sin is worse than picking your nose. It's like lying to your friends. Oh. It would be like um, not being kind to your brothers and sisters. It would even like pulling the tail on your dog just out of meanness. Huh? I've done all of those things. I mean, the dog is just there, you know, and he's looking at me and he's all like, <laughs> You know, and then his tail's all right there, just wagging, you know. It's like it's taunting me, like, you can't grab me, you can't grab me. I get mad, and I'm like, yes, I can, you know. And after about five or six tries, I finally grab hold of it. And once you grab a dog's tail, you got to do something with it. So I just give it a yank, and then the dog yelps, and then I feel bad. I'm just telling you, Zach, I can't do this on my own. I just did. you can't do it by yourself. That's why God sent his one and only son. That was Jesus. Yeah, you're right. Hey, I got that one right. Yeah. And you didn't get any right. I'm winning. It's not a competition, Zev. I'm just trying to tell you that God sent Jesus to clean up our sin. Oh, that is big. That's like Uncle Pete's gravy boat big. Hey, I have an idea. Let's pretend that we are the snow. I can't do that. I don't like, like snow. I can look like sand, but not snow. Here you go. Take this ketchup. Okay. Take this mustard. Okay. And take this ham. What do I want? I want you to pour it all over the snow. No, it'll get it all gross and nasty and yucky and icky. It's gonna be okay, just trust me. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Here, ham. The hemp's frozen. Yeah, sin comes in all shapes and sizes. This looks awful. It is gross. I don't want to look like that snow. I want to look like the white snow. See, that just did, Zeb. This is what sin does to us. It covers up how God made us. But you know what? God is really, 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 really smart. He sent his one and only son to die on the cross for our sin to clean it up. He did that just for me? And me, and you. If you ask him to be the boss of your life, he will clean up your sin and make you white as snow. Zorks! Where did he go? That's what Jesus does. He forgives us and makes us white as snow. Oh, brother, you've taught me a lot. I'd like to repay the favor. I would like to help make you white as snow. Oh no, I've already asked you just to make me white as snow. No, this is a different way. Watch. White as snow! <laughs> Now you're all white as snow. Oh, I'm gonna, oh, oh, pan it off, pan it off. I'm gonna get in trouble. Pan it off. I don't want you to see this. Oh, man, how are you guys doing today? I just want to be sure that everyone is with us. Uh, you can go on Facebook and you will be watching us. 
live. I'm reading comments. I'm going to be bringing <clears throat> comments in there now. Uh, yes, I've seen quite a number of you. I will be putting the comments as we begin to do our service. Just, you know, very quickly, it's cold. Yes, very cold. Uh, I can see that Rob and Jane are here. Not yet. I'm not able to see. Uh, yes, welcome, 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 <clears throat> welcome. We are setting up this <clears throat> to the glory of God. Coordinating so many things at the same time. Yes, I'm just screaming it in. Uh, okay, now I can. Good. I'm trying to do so, so many things, coordinating our music. <clears throat> Excuse me. Today's another wonderful day that our God has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Uh, we have two people singing for us today. Uh, Joel will be singing and then uh norm will be doing that for us singing special song and so i'm going to be bringing them in but let's uh let, i'm going to kind of bring them to the screen before i take them back uh welcome welcome uh vicky castro is here betty is here betty's going to be reading welcome god bless you and we are grateful to god so when that time comes i'm going to bring you back so you have to kind of follow through the Facebook. So get ready. I just wanted you to see the people <clears throat> coming in. Good morning, Kelly says. Prayers that all are safe and warm. I want to be sure I know that uh, our dear sister is uh, helping to coordinate online just to make me know what's going on. Uh, Melody, thank you so much. It's much easier to come to the building. Uh, so... <laughs> Jenny said, thanks for letting us stay home and warm. Yes, well, <laughs> I don't know whether it was good or not, but I think it's good. Let's try some technology. Uh, Linda says, uh, good morning. Love your sweater, Tunde. Okay, thank you. I got this wonderful sweater. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, I say you should share with your friends. Kelly saying good morning. Keith Blaylock, thank you, Blaylock. Thank you for joining. Say greetings to everyone. So we'll begin and then we will take a song from Joel. We'll take our Bible readings and then I'll take a special song from our dear brother Noma. And then we'll go, uh, just a few announcements. I'd like to remind you that on Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. Uh, we'll have two services. I'd just like you to know about that. Uh, I know it's still going to be cold, but it's going to be warmer than today. So please, if you've not been doing that, make it a duty to to be part of the Ash Wednesday services. We remind ourselves of re repentance. We remind ourselves that we are human and we remind ourselves of God's grace. And so that's very important that we, you know, get ourselves to do some of these things. Uh, I would like you to come, get yourself ready, and the Lord is going to bless us. Uh, the first service on Wednesday is going to be nine in the morning to allow people to come in from work, spend some time out. And then the second one is going to be 5.30 in the evening. Uh, Kone is saying good morning, everyone. I will read our call to worship, and then we will pray, and then Joel will give us a song. In Psalm 51 to 6, say, Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory over all the earth be found. The mighty one, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to his setting, out of Zion, the perfect perfection of beauty shines forth. Our God comes and does not keep silent. Before womb is a devouring fire, round about womb is a mighty storm. God calls to the heavens and above to the earth that the people may be judged. Gather to me, my faithful ones, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare God's righteousness for God alone is judge. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be above the earth. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, 
We have come to you on this very cold morning, worshiping you together and we're thanking you for all that you've done for us and all that you've been to us. We pray that you will be with us as we continue in this worship today and to many other people who are going to be joining us online and many other people who are going to be watching this after now. May your presence fill our hearts, fill our room. Holy God, upon the mountain you reveal our Messiah, whom by his death and resurrection will fulfill both the law and the prophet, by his transfiguration and lighten our path, that we may dare to suffer with him in service of humanity. So share in everlasting glory of him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. Now I'm going to be uh, turning it to Joel. I still want you to keep coming. It's an interactions, interactive service today. So keep typing and keep interacting. I'll get Joel on the screen. Joel. Good morning. <laughs> Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm to the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are spilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in heavenless this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Still on the cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Joel. We are grateful. Uh, while we're doing that, if you have any special uh, prayer requests, please you can type them in and we will take time to pray about them. But before, as we continue, uh, Margaret Cross, a beautiful song uh, and your voice, Joel, beautiful. Uh, thank you for all those comments. Those comments makes me, they make me know that you are engaged in what we're doing. And so I'm going to, we will, uh, beautiful, Dexis Barrett says, 
We're going to read the Old Testament reading, which is 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse number 1 to 12. And I will be calling Vicky Katria. She's She was supposed to read it in church. So she's reading it because we're actually having church online. Uh, so I'll welcome Vicky uh, to read for us. Vicky, here you go. Okay, thank you. And thank you again, Joel. That was lovely. Um, 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elijah were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elijah, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elijah said, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elijah and asked, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elijah replied, but do not speak of it. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elijah, the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elijah and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, but do not speak of it. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men of the company of the prophets went and stood at, the, at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elijah had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elijah replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet, if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours, otherwise not. As they were walking along and talking together, Suddenly, a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elijah saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elijah saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them apart. The next reading we're going to be taking uh, from Betty. Uh, over to you, Betty. Okay, I'm reading from Mark 9, 2 through 9. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up to a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them, and there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, they were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud, This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. These are the words of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much. So I'm going to be inviting, uh, I will be inviting Norm to sing for us now at this time. Right, 
On Jordan's stormy banks I stand and cast a wishful eye To Canaan's fair and happy land where my possessions lie I am bound for the promised land And I'm bound for the promised land Oh, who will come and go with me? I am bound for the promised land. Oh, the transporting rapturous scene that rises to my sight. Sweet fields arrayed in living green and rivers of delight. I am bound for the promised land, I am bound for the promised land. Oh, who will come and go with me, I am bound for the promised land. There generous fruits that never fail on trees immortal grow. There rocks and hills and brooks and vales with milk and honey flow. I am bound for the promised land. I'm bound for the promised land. Oh, who will come and go with me? I am bound for the promised land. Soon will the Lord my soul prepare for joy beyond the skies where never-ending pleasures roll and praises never die i am bound for the promised land i'm bound for the promised land oh who will come and go with me i am bound for the promised land thank you so so much thank you Nam. thank you we are so grateful what a great time what a great time yes we are online today yes praise be to god thank you for that wonderful song. It's time to pray at this point, and I'll, I'll bring all of you up if you are still there, and we will pray together. Uh, someone said, wonderful, wonderful. Stephanie is trying to find out, uh, he was wondering who composed the song. Well, you can meet with Norm and find out, but at this point, I'm going to bring everyone, and we're going to be praying together. Uh, Stephanie was uh, asking who composed, composed the song. So, you know, so you, you, so you can go meet with Norm meet and with then you find, find, find out, find but out. But that was wonderful. That was wonderful. Uh, if you had, uh, your, if you had your phone, phone on, on, just just reduce, reduce, the, volume, reduce the volume, silence your volume silence because your there's, volume, a there's a feedback I'm getting back, from one of you. So, so sorry. Sorry. We have a few, uh, a few prayer requests, requests. and uh, if you still have one, please. Uh, Charlie says, thank you, good rendition. Chinedu says, good rendition. Uh, yes. Sorry to note that there is no children's story. <laughs> we did our children's story actually earlier. Maybe I'm going to play it again, the children's story. Uh, after we've prayed, I'll play the children's story, and then we'll go for the sermon. So we've, if you have any other prayer requests, we're praying for a couple of people. Robin had posted that we should pray for their daughters. They will be traveling today and tomorrow. Uh, you know, there is really bad roads and risky, but let's pray that the Lord will keep them and pro provide and uh, protect them. Uh, so we'll be praying. And also that we should pray for Tama Dags. I don't know the, the story, but that maybe for healing, that the Lord will heal. So let's pray. I will also pray for the recovery of Chip Hartman, uh, uh, Sean's son, who had to do surgery yesterday. So let's we'll keep praying uh, for them. Uh, okay, prayer request for Sharon Davis, having some tests tomorrow. Uh, so we're going to be doing that prayer request for. So let's let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, we give you praise for today and we thank you for all you've done for us and giving us the opportunity to fellowship together, even in this cold weather. What a great blessing. We thank you for those who have been able to sing for us. We thank you for Norm. We thank you for Joel. And we thank you for our liturgists today, Vicky and Betty, and we're grateful to you. We want to commit Robin's daughters as they travel today and tomorrow that you will keep them safe. You will protect them. We pray for those who are not having a place to lay their heads in this very terrible cold or who are not able to afford to pay for heat at this time. We pray that you will come to their aid and come to their rescue in this time of need. We want to remember Chip Hartman and commit him into your hand that as he recovers from the surgery, that the recovery will be so fast and that you will bring complete healing upon him. We pray at this time for their sister, Sharon Davis, having some tests tomorrow. Please, we pray that we want to hear good news. We also pray for uh, Glenn's Katia's sister who had been moved to Madonna Rehab Center in Lincoln, that she will gain strength and begin healing in the name of Jesus. We pray for those others who are going to be sending their requests. God, you know our needs even before we ask. So we pray that you will meet us at the points of our needs. We commit the rest of this service to you that you will speak to our hearts even on this day. Even though we are meeting in the comfort of our homes, we pray that your word will be strong in our hearts. We thank you and we pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you so much. So my, my friends who have been helping us with the service, you are free to them be freer drink your coffee, and watch online. I'm going to be playing the video for the children's time, but we can learn a lot from that video. It's a short video. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Vicky. Uh, I'll see you again. God bless you. Yeah. Satellite channel number two. Community access from deep in the heart of Little Dixie. Hi, my name is Zev. And my name is Zach. And, and it's, it's the Zev, Zev and Zach Show. Now hear the story about Zev and Zach. You can learn from God to keep them on track. Yeah. Sit right now and listen up, y'all. Oh, listen to us. God loves us all. What about me? Well, you do, Clyde. Today we are standing out here in this field to tell you how much God loves you. Hey, Zach, um, how is us freezing out here going to tell people about God's love. No, we're not gonna tell the story. The snow will tell the story. Well, now that won't work. Snow doesn't talk, watch. Hello, snow. Hello, my name is Zeb, what's your name? How are you today? See, nothing, that just sits there. No, what I want the boys and girls to know is that God made us just like this. He made us pure as the white driven snow, but then sin entered the world and separated us from God. Hey, Zach, yeah. what is sin? Well, sin would be kind of like the bad stuff that you do. Oh, like picking my nose? What? You know. No, no, not in front of our friends, no. Sorry. Sin is worse than picking your nose. It's like lying to your friends. Oh. It would be like um, not being kind to your brothers and sisters. It would even like pulling the tail on your dog just out of meanness. Huh? I've done all of those things. I mean, the dog is just there, you know, and he's looking at me and he's all like, <laughs> You know, and then his tail's all right there, just wagging, you know. It's like it's taunting me, like, you can't grab me, you can't grab me. I get mad, and I'm like, yes, I can. You know, and after about five or six tries, I finally grab hold of it. And once you grab a dog's tail, you got to do something with it. So I just give it a yank, and then the dog yelps, and then I feel bad. I'm just telling you, Zach, I can't do this on my own. I just did. You can't do it by yourself. That's why God sent his one and only son. That was Jesus. Yeah, you're right. Hey, I got that one right. Yeah. And you didn't get any right. I'm winning. It's not a competition, Zev. I'm just trying to tell you that God sent Jesus to clean up our sin. Oh, that is big. That's like Uncle Pete's gravy boat big. 
Hey, I have an idea. Let's pretend that we are the snow. I can't do that. I don't look like snow. I can look like sand, but not snow. Here you go. Take this ketchup. Okay. Take this mustard. Okay. And take this ham. What, what do I want? Well, I want you to pour it all over the snow. No, it'll get it all gross and nasty and yucky and icky. It's gonna be okay, just trust me. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Here, hang on. The hemp's frozen. Yeah, sin comes in all shapes and sizes. This looks awful. It is gross. I don't want to look like that snow. I want to look like the white snow. See, that just did, Zeb. This is what sin does to us. It covers up how God made us. But you know what? God is really, 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 really smart. He sent his one and only son to die on the cross for our sin to clean it up. He did that just for me? And me, and you. If you ask him to be the boss of your life, he will clean up your sin and make you white as snow. Zorks! Where did he go? That's what Jesus does. He forgives us and makes us white as snow. Oh. Brother, you've taught me a lot. I'd like to repay the favor. I would like to help make you white as snow. Oh no, I've already asked you just to make me white as snow. No, this is a different way. Watch. White as snow! <laughs> now you're all white as snow. Oh, I'm gonna, oh, oh, pan it off, pan it off. I'm gonna get in trouble. Pan it off. I don't want you to see this. Hey, friends. Yes, so thank you so much. Uh, I just wanted to remind us <clears throat> that uh, our Ash Wednesday services are going to be on and that we're going to have a great time. We will do communion and then we will also find time uh, to do the imposition of ashes. Also, we started doing a reflection every Wednesday, Wednesday evening inspiration on KSR. We started last Wednesday. Uh, it's going to be, it's always going to be at 5.45 to 6 p.m. on Wednesday evening. So, you know, we've been able to find that spot just to reach out to different people. We will use the word of God and then we will reflect for 15 minutes on God's word every week. Uh, the, our church is sponsoring that and we'll be sharing. And sometimes maybe we'll do some interviews if we have the time. But that's it. So please, I'd like you to invite your friend. I'd like you to listen to the radio, uh, AM 610. And we're going to, you know, continue to do that. So can you type for me this morning as we listen to God's word? What is the most important encounter you've ever had? I'd like to read it. Was it an encounter with your spouse? Because today is Valentine's Day, you know. The older people get, they forget some of those things. Uh, the young people, oh, it's a big deal for them. Everywhere is red and everybody is eating and drinking. But uh, so maybe for some people, that is the most important encounter they've ever had was when they met this wonderful lady or this wonderful man. But I want to know, what was the, what would you consider the most important encounter you've ever had? You know, maybe with a guy or with a job or with something, something that is remarkable or memorable for you, something that is memorable that you will always remember each time, you know, you reflect on your life. I, I like to, I like you to type these things. Let me, st I'll start seeing them while we look at that text again. Today is called Transfiguration Sunday, Transfiguration Sunday. So I keep typing in and I'm going to be putting some of them on the screen very soon. Yes, I'm going to be putting them on the screen very soon. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm going to kind of look at that text that Betty read for us beautifully. What I just want to do is to look at that text, just a little bit part of it. Uh, I'll, I'll read it for us. After six days, Jesus took Peter and James and John with him. Uh, and led them up high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, 
it is good for us to be here. Let us put three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the, from the cloud, This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when, it, when they looked around, they, saw, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. Yes, so I'm, I'm, I'm interested in what people said about, oh, uh, Stephanie said my dad shortly passed away, uh, with my dad shortly before he passed away. So that was an encounter that she could still remember and that she celebrates. Any other person has any other thing they want to type in, you know, while we're talking. <clears throat> Today is the last day, uh, the last Sunday in the season of Ep Epiphany. Let me drink some water. Today is the last day, the last Sunday. The season of Epiphany is a season where we see the various manifestations of Christ as light. His miracles, his power, his wonders, we see it every time. All through the scripture, we see that. But uh, Epiphany ends with this very powerful Sunday that we call Transfiguration Sunday. The Sunday when we remember this experience that the children, that the disciples of Jesus had with him, transfiguration. Can you, can you reply to me? What does it mean to be transfigured? What does it mean to be transfigured? You can try, type in that. What does it mean to be transfigured? What does it mean to be transfigured? The Old Testament reading gave us very interesting and vivid picture of Elijah and Elisha. Elisha served Elijah, Elijah for many years, and, uh, you know, he needed to now take over. And we read that story, how Elijah was taken away from the mountain uh, through the chariots of fire. I will not be zeroing in on that today. I will be zeroing in on the story in, in Mark. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, Robin said, a youth mission trip with journeys to Denver, serving at a homeless shelter and meeting folks. That was an encounter she has never forgotten. You see that? Serving homeless people, an encounter she has never forgotten. And some of us do have many, many, many more encounters that we, you know, we can remember that made very great impact in our lives. Dexie said, the last baseball game I watched with my dad was the Colorado Rookies. First shout, shout out. The joy on my dad's face and his voice, I still and hear. Huh? I still see and hear. What an encounter. <clears throat> Sophia, Sophia Ladimid is a mission trip to Tennessee where we have to rebuild people's homes. That is a, that is a very interesting encounter. Wonderful. Seeing people who are homeless and helping them to rebuild their homes was an, an interesting an encounter you've, you've never forgotten. For me, I remember going to Colombia, South, South America, you know, going to visit for 10 days and going to the prison. My encounter seeing prisoners who had been condemned to death and who had encountered Jesus in prison and the way they were clapping and rejoicing was something that I have never recovered from. It was an interesting, powerful encounter. Great man, great man, evangelist from California. He says, my mother, before she passed away, she gave me a Bible and said, I should value, treasure, and follow the instructions obediently in my life that it will give me eternal life. What a great encounter. Coincidentally, I know and uh, I was pastor to uh, great man's mom some 20, 20 something years ago, maybe 20 years ago. And that was a great woman who loved the Lord, who served the Lord as a volunteer in the church at different times. <clears throat> so here's a question. What encounter can you remember? Now, for the disciples of Jesus, the three of them, Peter, James, and John, this was an encounter they will never forget. An encounter they will leave to remember. 
when they saw Jesus being transfigured, transformed, dazzling like light, they could not imagine it. It was an encounter they could never forget. Now, I know that there are some encounters we do have that may be kind of bad encounters, but we still don't forget them. You know, someone treated you in such a way that you couldn't believe your eyes and you're still like still remembering that encounter. But there are many positive encounters that we can remember of people doing things that have challenged us, that have you know, supported us, that have informed us, that have empowered us. So this was what the disciples of Jesus had. They had an encounter. I just wanted to pick a few things from this story because I still, I still don't want to overshoot our time as much as possible. Number one. Take note that when people encounter God's glory, they never remain the same. When people encounter God's glory, they never remain the same. Now, from the Old Testament, all through to these first disciples and to the great leaders of history, the effect is always the same. When people encounter God's glory, they never remain the same. When Moses encountered God's glory, People had to cover his face. The glory was so much. Are you still there with me, friends? When you encounter God's glory, you do not remain the same. I just pray for you, my friends, as we go into the season of Lent, that you encounter God's glory afresh in this season as we go into Lent. That you will encounter God in a way you've never seen before that you will encounter him in the way you've never experienced him before and that there will be a transformation in your life. Can I get an amen? Type in amen. Type in amen in agreement with that prayer. Type in amen. May you encounter God's glory. Yes. Great man says amen. Yes. May you encounter God's glory. May you encounter God's glory in the name of Jesus because when we encounter God's glory, we do not remain the same. Yes, Sophia says amen. Yes, Jenny says amen. Dexter says amen. May you encounter God's glory. May you. Stephanie says amen. Vicky says amen. Linda says amen. Sharon says amen. Yes, Rob and Jane Wastron says amen. They say amen. Because when we encounter God's glory, it redefines our lives. It makes things. There's a songwriter. There's a song that says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. And the things of this world, we, they will strangely deem, they will be deemed in the light of his glorious grace. So when, people, when we encounter God in a unique way, it makes the things of this world look very, very immaterial. And so I pray that you encounter God. Uh, you know, Charlie said, Charlene says, amen. Robin Fox says, amen. Great man, great man says, yes. Ruth says, amen. Chinedu says amen. Palm and John Heiser says they, they say amen. Yes, Crystal and Vanda May says amen. They say amen. In the name of Jesus, help us, Lord, great man says. So that's the first thing I wanted to take note. Number two, the story that we see here appears, this story that Betty read for us in Mark's gospel, appears in the synoptic gospel. The synoptic gospels are Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They seem to appear at the same place. The story appeared and it's situated between Jesus talking about his death, dying and going to the cross, and the story of casting demons, which his other disciples were not able to cast. They were struggling with that demon. And maybe I'll get back to that, I don't know, but here's the, here the issue. That story is very important that encountering God helps us to face the challenges of life. Let me say it this way. Encountering God on the mountain has an effect on what happens in the valley. When we encounter the glory of God on the mountain with Jesus, it becomes much, much easier to deal with the situations of life in our ordinary life. And you will agree with me that some of the successes you've had as a person, you will see that when you have this genuine relationship with Jesus, this encounter that crisis with you, that is with you in the midst of your situation, 
that acknowledgement, that truth helps you to go through challenges of life. I've had the opportunity of talking with people who have lost loved ones. And they would, and I would tell them, the, I would ask them the question, how did you survive? Why didn't you run mad? Why is it that you, you were still able to survive? And they would come back and say to me, Pastor, it was God. It was the grace of God. It was the strength of God, not from myself. For me, I couldn't have done this. So the experience of the glory of God is directly relevant to the victory that we get in oppositions in life and in demonic attacks. Now, I know some people don't believe that there are demons, but actually there are demons. And in challenges of life, the glory of God is really important for us to go with us. That was why Moses said, we will not go further without your glory. We want you to go with us. If God doesn't go with us, then we will be in trouble. And God said, my presence will go with you and you will have peace. Thirdly, this text reminds us that divine approval is crucial in every phase of our lives. So let me, let me say it this way. Jesus takes his three disciples to the mountain. They saw the glory of God. They saw Moses. They saw Elijah. Elijah was taken by chariot. Moses who saw the glory of God. They saw these two people talking with Jesus. Now, we're not sure how Peter and the people knew that these were Moses or Elijah. We don't know whether Moses was holding that staff with that wonderful white beard. And they said, oh, this must be Moses. We don't know whether Elijah was having that his funny gaddle that he wore, he wore as a prophet on the mountain. And they said, oh, this must be Elijah. But somehow they knew the, the identity of these two people, Moses and Elijah. Now, listen to me, friends. Moses, within the Jewish setting, re represents the law. The law. Elijah represents the prophet. So you see that in this encounter is a very interesting symbolism where the law and the prophet is fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ. Oh, remember, he said it himself. He said, I have not come to, you know, to destroy the law and the prophet. I've come to fulfill them. And so in this encounter, we see the law represented by Moses, the prophet represented by Elijah, and we see Jesus in the middle of them, talking with them. What an interesting thing to know. And that is important. Jesus fulfills the law and the prophet. But I want you to remember another thing here. So while this was happening, Peter was impressed. I don't know if it has ever happened to you before that you had a relationship with someone that you, don't, you didn't really know who they were. Randy says, amen. You don't really know who they were. Only for a while, maybe you walked with them. I, I used to have a member in the church some years ago, maybe 25 years, something years ago. He was coming to church. I never really knew him. Eventually, I discovered that he was a brigadier general in the Nigerian army. And he invited me to come visit with him. And I was in, the, in his vehicle. And I saw all these soldiers, you know, saluting and saluting as we were driving. I'm like, wow. I never knew who he was. Or I never really knew the impact and how important this guy was. So after that encounter, I'm like, I was like, okay. But he was a very simple person. So I guess in this, in, in this story, Peter sees Jesus talking with this prophet and this Moses who stands for the law, who is regarded and respected by everyone. Suddenly it dawned on him that Jesus must be really important. And look at what he said. Peter said to Jesus, let's just stay here. We'll make one tabernacle, one tent for Moses. One tent for Elijah, one tent for you. I'm wondering, what about the other three people? He's not even talking about himself. He's not even talking about where these other guys are going to stay. He's just excited by this experience. And he seemed to be saying, Jesus, you are now a, a big guy. You are now with prophets like, you know, Moses and Elijah. And why he was doing that, 
the scripture says the glory of God came down and God spoke from heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Let me quickly say that. I've got about 10 minutes to go. Let me quickly say this. As Peter was trying to equate Jesus with Moses and Elijah, which was like a promotion, trying to promote Jesus, God actually spoke from heaven and said, no, Mr. Peter, you seem to be making a mistake. This is not Elijah. This is not equal to Elijah. This is not equal to Moses. This person is my beloved son. He's much more than what you think of him. He is the one who says before Abraham was, I am. He is the one that is called the son of God. The word from the beginning. The light that shines in the darkness. The shepherd of our soul. The lily of the valley. The bright and the morning star. He is the one that dwells in the light. Inapproachable. That's the person we're talking about. We're talking about someone who is more superior to any prophet. We're talking about the son of God. And God spoke. I, I like to pray for you. Now, I know that I don't, I don't pray a lot when I preach, but I like to pray for you. That in the midst of your circumstance, as you face the world, as people define you and redefine you and think of who they think you are, may God speak for you. May God's voice, like it did for Jesus on that day, speak for you in the midst of situations, in the midst of various circumstances to say, this is my child. Don't harass him. Don't destroy him. Don't disturb him. May God's voice speak when the angels of darkness, when demons and when issues of life come like a flood to pull you down. May God's voice speak and say, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. I pray that for your children and your children's children, the Lord will speak for them in the school. The Lord will speak for them at work. The Lord will speak for them in the midst of situation. The Lord will speak for them on the sick bed and say, this one belongs to me. Stay clear. He's more than what you think. That's an interesting thing that I see there. So we see three stages of approval for Jesus. We saw Jesus in Matthew chapter 3 as he was baptized. The voice of the Lord says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Then in John chapter 12 from verse 27 to 29, Jesus was kind of depressed. And at that major time of challenge, Jesus was troubled, the Bible says. And he complained to God. And the voice came, I have glorified you. That was another level of approval. And at this point of transfiguration, we see the voice of the Lord saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. But then there was an additional thing. Listen to him. It's not just that you acknowledge that he's my son, but listen to him. And I think in our lives, we need to get to that point where we gain what, what, what has been called the prophetic voice. Where in the society, we can speak for God's word. We can speak for God's word in our community and people will listen to us because we are obeying the will of God the Father. Finally, let me say it this way. Encountering God's glory and gaining divine approval should lead us to a higher commitment to the Lord. As we prepare for Lent, may we continue to desire a greater encounter with the Lord. You see, when we obey God and serve him, he gives us an additional assignment. I don't know if you guys know, those of you who have worked a lot in the church, you know what, what I'm talking about. That there's no time that you are ever going to have that piece of, you know, I'm not going to do anything. I've done that before many times. I'm like, okay, I got to take some time off. And after a few times, I just discovered that there's something else to do, you know. Because once you're in God's work, there's always something else. Okay, you don't want this, then God gives you something else. Oh, I don't want to do this one. Then he gives you something else because when we become faithful to him, he's able to entrust things into our hands. We were talking about that during the week when we were talking about one of our, our friends and I'm going to, we're going to make that announcement later. But we talked about how he has served, you know, our choir director, how he has served for over 40 years. 
I said he has been serving probably before I was born. He has been serving as choir director of the church before I was born. And so when, when we think about, and many of you, you do many things for years for the Lord. You see, in the vineyard of God, we get promoted into doing some other stuff, and then we do some other stuff. He gives us that divine approval. He approves us. Paul knew this when he said in Philippians chapter 3, 9, uh, 7 to 12, he said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformed to his death. And then he said, I have not apprehended. I have not got to where I'm going. But one thing I do, forgetting those things behind and looking forward to the goal ahead of me. So the last part of this transfiguration story gives us the insight. Elijah was gone. Moses was gone. Then only Jesus was left. Only Jesus was left. Because in this story, Jesus is the main character of this story in this scene. Elijah, Moses, these were just kind of supporting actors if you watch movies. The main actor in this story is Jesus. The attention was to be put on him. And we are surrounded many times in our lives with distraction, responsibilities, and things that overwhelm us, our needs, our brokenness, and all these things. I want to encourage you this season, let your attention be on Jesus. Because only him matters in our lives. He's the one that we serve. He's the one that gives us strength to worship in the way we ought to worship. And I want to encourage you, my dear friends. Jesus wants to be the center of our lives. Jesus wants to be the center of our lives. He doesn't want to struggle with many things in our lives. He wants to be the center of our lives. And if you listen to my story on the radio uh, on Wednesday, I told that story. He, God, he wants to be the center. So I want to encourage you in this season of Lent, as we get into the season of Lent, to refocus yourself on Jesus. And you know, the rest of the story was that as soon as they saw that, that encounter, they came down to the valley. And here was this boy who has been attacked by demonic forces, and the disciples of Jesus could not do anything about it. But once they descended from the mountain, they were able to handle the things in the valley. So friends, God is inviting us to the Mount of Transfiguration. He wants us to encounter him afresh. Maybe, like the stories many of you have told, those encounters, you remember them. He says, I want to have an encounter with you on the mountain. I want to reveal myself to you afresh. And I want to encourage you. It does not matter what happens in this world. The world is changing fast. Our encounters with Jesus will give us the strength to go through the challenges of the times. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you that we've had your word and we thank you for your word. We pray that you will grant us grace to seek to do your will, to seek to follow you, to seek to encounter you in a special way. And so we pray that you will grant us that grace. And for those who are in the midst of challenges at this time, they are in the valley, may they experience you afresh on the mountainside. Blessed be your name, O Lord. We ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So, you know, before I say the benediction, I'd just like to remind you, we didn't have services today, so we'll take our offerings. You can mail our offerings, but also you can go to uh, shadronumc.org, and on there, there's a place that where you can click and give your donation for today. For those of you who are in town, you can always bring in your checks anytime uh, to the church or mail them. We want to thank you especially for different people who have been giving towards the ministry of our church, and we want to thank those who have been giving towards the ministry of uh, the getting of our new sound system and we're all, all hands on deck and we're waiting for what God we do to reach out to many people as much as possible. Our God can do it. And so 
Praise God for whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. O Lord, out of the abundance you've given us, we've given our offerings, we've brought our offerings, receive us, receive our offerings. And may it be used for your glory. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we close today, I don't want to do a hymn. We have the hymn, Jesus Shari, and we'll do that to, uh, next week. Uh, receive this benediction. Go now and speak of what you have seen of God's glory. Do not cling to the holy moments when heaven overshadows you. But as the Lord lives, listen to Christ and follow him from the places of revelation to the places of mission. And may God shine the light of glory into your hearts. May Christ be with you and never leave you. And may the Spirit renew the image of God within you. Go forth in peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all through the week and now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, my dear friends. I can see uh, Suze Jones talked about when he was baptized in a sandpit in Lexington, Nebraska at five years old with parents. Yes, thank you, says amen. Randy Lanson says amen. Julia Dronin, thank you. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate that. I would like to really thank Norma and Betty. Thank you so much for, for, for being with me. You, I, I'm seeing you on my screen, even though I don't show you every time. I'm preaching to you. You're my audience. Before I brief it out, thank you so much. Joel, thank you so much. Uh, Vicky, thank you so much. Uh, yes, I'm seeing, seeing all the comments. I'm putting them there. May you have a great week this week. If you want it, you can type an amen. Yes, Mel Morford, thank you. I hope you're enjoying yourselves down south where it's warm. Yes, God bless you. Do have a great, great week. A great week, a great week. And the Lord bless you. I'll leave you with that video again. Maybe I'll get an, I have a, I'm going to do, let me see if I have one video to just close up our talk. The world is fragile. Life is fragile. It's a fact we're learning in real time, every day. What we once called normal has seemingly disappeared. There's uncertainty in the air, restlessness in our hearts. Things we once took for granted are becoming difficult to find. Our usual day-to-day -day has evolved into this odd chaos. Peace is becoming obsolete. Many have lost jobs, security, and those they love. The pain is undeniable. But what if our fragility caused us to lean harder into God? What if, in our weakness, we chose to rely more on His strength? Would our outlook change? Would the peace that passes understanding begin to drown out the noise of this moment? Would we walk in a quiet confidence, knowing our God is mighty to save? We're not promised tomorrow, but we are given a simple truth to stand on. Our God goes before us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Yes, life is fragile. But in our weakness, He is strong.